Hi friends! How many of you guys remember my old videos where I would always start out my videos and be taking a big sip of Pepsi? Nine years later, nothing's changed. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about tips and tricks to make your pathoses, 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 pathos plants and philodendrons into bushier plants. This is a video that I wish that I had when I first started this incredible journey of plants just because I would not end up with these full bushy plants like you want and I was always getting upset like why are my plants not getting bushy? Anyways, I've watched a bunch of videos and I've done a bunch of, of course, I've done my own plants and stuff and I think that I've kind of nailed down how to make bushy plants. Also to kind of start out this video, I've been getting a lot of comments about people saying that I'm talking really fast and it's funny because when I spend hours editing my own video, I don't ever think like, oh, I'm talking way too fast. But going back and watching some old videos, I'm like, I speed through my videos and I don't want to do that. But when I get excited about things, I just like yell and I talk really fast. So I'm gonna try to avoid doing that in today's video, but I might talk a little bit fast. So I'm not gonna have a lot of individual plants to show you because if you watched my last video, I ended up staking up a lot of my big bushy pothoses and philodendrons. I'm really like obsessed with the whole like, staking your plants up to the ceiling or a poles or whatever. So there's not gonna be a lot that I can show. I have brought over my big bushy pothoses and stuff that I do have, just so that I can kind of give you some examples when I'm going through all my tips that I have. So the first tip that I have is when you're going and purchasing a plant and you're going to your favorite nursery and it's the best day ever because I know that feeling, look for a pothos or a philodendron plant that has lots of cuttings in one pot. Like for example, I went and I bought a Cebu Blue pothos and I was just so excited about getting a Cebu Blue ploth Cebu it's a hard Cebu Blue pothos. I was so excited about getting one that I didn't take a second and just look at the plant and really like take into consideration what it's gonna look like when it grows up. Grows up, grows big, grows full, whatever. And so I am left with a Cebu Blue that isn't super bushy. Now I am cutting and propagating it. I'll talk a little bit about that later, but it did kind of become like a leggier plant. So when you're going to the plant store, really take a look at the plant that you're buying and how many individual cuttings are in the soil. So let me give you an example. This is a pothos that I bought. Right now it sits in my bedroom. This guy will come actually into this video a lot just because I wanted to use him as an example. But if you look in the dirt, you can see that he's got 15 or 20 cuttings individually in the soil. That is going to help you get the full kind of look, this isn't even my fullest plant, but like the full kind of look that you want. Because if you have a plant that only has two or three little cuttings in the soil, then you are gonna have to do a lot of work to get it to kind of like the bushy look that you want. I went and I bought a philodendron micans. The philodendron micans was on my wish list for a very long time and I just kind of bought the first one I got my hands on. It was from Facebook Marketplace. It had like three or four little cuttings in it. So for about a year, I just kind of staked it up a pole and I was like, whatever, it was beautiful. I wish I had pictures of it, but I didn't take any pictures. Then I was like, when I got into my obsession of hanging plants all over the walls and clipping them to the ceiling and whatnot. I decided to do that on my micans and it ended up so ugly. It was literally just three or four extremely long strands and I didn't like that look. So what I ended up doing, and this is something that I've done for my Cebu Blue, my Pothos, my Philodendron, I've done this pretty much since I started my plant journey, is propagating. So what I did is I took, there's more of these because my plant was very long, but I took the big long strands that I had, the two or three big long strands, and I just cut them into tiny little pieces. There's probably 40 or 50 cuttings, not just in here, but there's more. And what I'm gonna do is once these start to grow roots, which they already have, it's only been about a week or so, I'm gonna put them back into the pot and then I'll have a much bushier plant. There are other ways to propagate. I love water propagation. This is just my favorite way to do it. I love being able to see the roots. Honestly, I love thrifting and just getting little glass jars because I'm like, I could propagate something in there. This is a great idea if you buy a plant that's, I don't know, been on your wish list for a really long time or it's like a really expensive plant for a really good deal, but you're like, oh, it doesn't have that many nodes. Don't worry, because you can find a way to get around that by propagating. I'm gonna insert a picture of my bushiest plant. So this picture that I'm showing you is a picture from a photo shoot that I did with all of my plants. And the reason I wanted to show you this is because this is kind of the look that you're going for when talking about bushy plants. It's kind of that cascading kind of, I think of it as like a floral bouquet kind of look. It looked 
kind of like something that I wanted to hold down the aisle when I got married. When you're looking to get that big and bushy look, definitely look for a plan that has lots of individual cuttings in it because that's definitely gonna help you on your journey. Let's talk about water and fertilizing. So I'm kind of embarrassed to say this, but I didn't really get into the fertilizing game like early on in my plant journey. I kind of started recently and it has done wonders. And everybody told me that it was gonna do wonders for my plants. I was just like, oh, I'm too lazy or I couldn't find a good one or whatever it was. I would also like some advice on this because I, again, I'm new to the fertilizer game, but I just use this Schultz liquid plant food. I just put seven drops in my, I think it's like a liter of water or something. I don't know, I follow the instructions. I know this isn't even like the best fertilizer. You can do like fish emulsion and worm castings and compost and eggshells and whatever, but I have found great success with this. I just found this at my local plant store. I'm sure you can find it anywhere. Let's talk about it for a second. So fertilizing is the equivalent of plant food, which means that when you fertilize your pothos and your philodendron plants, the leaves are gonna grow much bigger and they're probably gonna grow a little bit bushier. Like overall, your plant is just gonna do better. Watering, let your pothos and philodendrons dry out between watering. I have droughted my plants. Droughted? I don't give them water? I don't know if that's the right term. But I have not watered my plants and they've done great. These plants like the philodendron and the pothos varieties are always very easy care plants. If you let them dry out between watering, they're gonna do really great. This is all, again, this is all just based on my own opinion with doing pothos and philodendrons. And if you watched my last video, you know that I basically only have pothos and philodendron plants. Yeah, this is what I do and they thrive. So when you go and you buy a plant and you're going home and you're like, oh my goodness, how do I care for this plant? A lot of these pothos and philodendron varieties will say low light tolerant, but while they are low light tolerant, that doesn't mean that they are going to thrive up to your standards. Higher light is always going to be better for plants. If you think about it, all plants started outdoors. And so if you think about the natural kind of light conditions that it would normally need, that's something that you want to keep in mind when you're placing your plants. This is why I want to talk about the bedroom pothos again. So this is my bedroom pothos. It's one of my only trailing pothos that I have right now. And you can see that the leaves are not huge. The internodal space is pretty far. Like it goes probably two or three inches before it grows another leaf. I like this look, but I know a lot of people who want kind of that cascading kind of look. The reason I like this is because look at this pot. I don't know, super cute. My aunt Cheryl bought it for my bridal shower. So look at the difference between that plant and then the picture. I'm gonna insert the picture again. And I'm gonna say this again, the only reason I can't show you that plant is because I've staked it up and I'll show you what it looks like now. This bedroom pothos is in extremely low light conditions. It has an LED light kind of, but it's really far from a window. It's still living, it's growing. I've had it there for probably a year and it's totally fine, but you can see the difference between kind of the three inches of the internodal length and then the big cascading look that you kind of want. The other thing with keeping plants in a low light condition is they're going to constantly be reaching to get as much light as possible. So again, you're going to get leggier plants because they're going to grow those big long stems and then a leaf because they're kind of looking for a light source. Honestly, the rule of thumb is there are very few plants that require no light. Snake plants are a great one if you have like a really, really dark spot in your home. ZZ plants are also really good. If you want to get a pothos, don't put it in your basement apartment if you have no windows because it probably will not do so well. The next tip is pruning. I love the Paige Plant Arena. She is incredible. She is the one who taught me how to do all of this stuff. I live by her videos. And she made a really good point. She said that pruning, even though it might seem kind of opposite of what you want, because you think about it, you cut it, you want it to be fuller. What it does is it forces the next leaf to come out from the node above. So you're gonna have a lot less internodal space. I wish I had an example to show you. In my personal experience, I don't know if this is true or not, but I find that when I prune my plants, the leaves that come out of the stem or the next node up is actually bigger. So that's been something that is kind of eye-opening to me because I'm like, I feel so bad cutting my plants and then I'm just like you are gonna do so much better another thing that I actually just started doing is the bobby pin method so I'm gonna show you a plant that I did this on give me a second so this is my giant snow queen pothos and it actually was trailing for quite a long time until I decided to do the bobby pin method because I didn't love this one trailing and there were some bald spots on the top as you can see there's literally no bald spots it's just big plant on the top. So I took the vines that were wrapped around and I just put it in the dirt and I literally just took a bobby pin and I just stuck the roots and the nodes and the aerial roots or whatever in the soil. I like how I'm just, I'm just gonna do the whole video like this now. 
what it forces it to do is basically the nodes are going to actually start growing inside the soil and you'll have like a bigger root system which ultimately equals a bigger plant. I like that method. I know there's a bunch of different ways to propagate. I'm not going to talk about that only because I'm not knowledgeable on propagating other than water propagating. I tried, what is it, sphagnum moss? I don't know, that sounds really wrong and gross. I tried LECA, it didn't work, so I'm not knowledgeable on that, so I'm not going to talk about it because I don't want to give you false information and you guys can come back and be like, Miss Lena Nielsen gave me the wrong information. The last tip that I have for you guys is staking your plants. I bought my plant like this and I started staking my plants since I bought it. Da 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 da. So this is a Marble Queen Pothos. It's the less variegated version of the Snow Queen, which I just showed you. If you think about it, if there's a Pothos growing in the wild, I don't know, if you're from Florida, I know that Florida just has like Pothos and Monsteras and stuff just like growing naturally from their trees, which is just, I'm jealous. However, if you think about it in the wild, plants are constantly growing aerial roots and the point of that is so that they can latch onto something and then their leaves will grow bigger as they grow up. A more mature plant equals bigger leaves, a plant that has stability and has its most outdoor like qualities is gonna grow bigger if you think about it. So ever since I bought this plant, again, I wish I had pictures of it when I was a baby because I wish I could just like show you what it looks like. It has, I mean, if you look, it's completely stuck onto the pole. Like I can't pull it off. It's stuck on there because all the aerial roots have just Again, like if you think about it, they're just gonna hook onto stuff. And I've seen it where big aerial roots in people's houses have gone like along baseboards and literally just like stuck into the baseboards, which is just crazy. If you think about it, it just makes sense. So I've started staking my plants and that's it. That's pretty much all of the tips that I can think of. With pothos and philodendron plants, they're all so easy to care for. There's just a lot of tips and tricks to make them into the plant that you want them to be. Just wanted to kind of give you my opinions on how I made my plant so beautiful. This guy, I never take him out of the bedroom, but like when I did this, I was like, hey, it's actually a really nice plant. It made me appreciate him a lot more. So thanks for that. Go check out my houseplant tour. I think, I never know what side it's gonna be on. My houseplant tour is my last video and I talk about all my plants and I show all of them. So yeah, if you're interested in seeing all of my houseplants, definitely go check that one out. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Again, I am one step away from becoming a YouTube creator and that is just like the idea of that just makes my... If you want to see more videos like this, please do not forget to hit that subscribe button and click the bell so that you'll never miss a video from me ever again. And I will see you in next week's video. Thanks so much. Bye.